Before starting any javelin coaching session, the following safety measures should be undertaken. Make sure that the javelins are always in good condition. Ensure that the throwing area is well defined and roped off if possible. This will stop other students wandering into the path of a javelin. Allow only the athletes who are throwing onto the runway. Keep athletes not throwing a good distance behind or to the side. Put the all throw, all retrieve rule in place. This means that javelins are retrieved together as a group after all athletes have taken their throw. Inform athletes that they must never run up to retrieve a javelin and should take extra care in wet weather. Advise athletes to place a hand over the tip of the protruding javelin when extracting it from the ground. Instruct athletes to walk back with their javelin and not to throw it back under any circumstances. Keep the approach runway clear of debris and in wet conditions it should be swept regularly. The javelin needs to be held with a firm grip to ensure that all the power generated in the run-up is transferred to the javelin. All javelins have a binding which is located in the midsection of the implement. The javelin must lie along the length of the hand alongside the base of the thumb, so that it is almost parallel to the forearm. There are several grip variations used by javelin throwers, and the athlete must use the grip that is most comfortable for them. Most throwers will use one of the following grips. In the first grip, the second finger and thumb are at the end of the binding to assist release. In the second grip, the index and second finger are spread either side of the javelin at the end of the binding. In the third grip, the index finger and thumb are at the end of the binding. Despite the different grip variations, it is important to ensure that whenever the javelin is held, the wrist should be kept straight to allow for greater control and proper javelin alignment. The javelin is a very difficult object to hold due to its shape and length. Potential throwers first need to learn to control the javelin. To achieve this, ask the athlete to stand with feet about one metre apart and with one foot forward, with the javelin held above the head with a firm grip and pointed at a shallow angle to the ground, the athlete throws the javelin about four to five metres in front of their forward foot. The javelin point should stick in the ground. The elbow of the throwing arm should be kept as close as possible to the javelin. This should eliminate a bowling action and a dropped elbow. Good performance in this drill will see the javelin point regularly sticking in the ground and the javelin staying in the same alignment as the throwing direction. When the athlete can demonstrate control of the javelin, they can progress to the next stages, such as standing and run-up throws. Against the standing throw, the javelin is drawn to a full arm's length and the arm should be firm and strong but not rigid. The throwing hand should be just above shoulder height, with the palm held upwards and the javelin parallel to the ground. The feet should be approximately one metre apart, with the rear leg slightly flexed and the weight on the ball of the foot. The forward leg should be straight, with the heel in contact with the ground. The throw begins with the rear heel being turned out, moving the weight onto the toe as the hip is driven forward and up. The shoulder leads the arm into the strike. The elbow is kept fairly high and close to the javelin. As the throw progresses, the athlete's weight is transferred from the rear leg to the front leg. The front leg braces and straightens as the javelin is released. Once the athlete is competent with the standing throw, they should then progress to the three stride approach. For this drill, the athlete should stand four stride lengths from the foul line with both feet together at two o'clock. The javelin should be fully withdrawn 
with the palm facing up and the elbow alongside the javelin. The movement is commenced by the left foot striding forward. The right leg then takes a long, high stride in front of the left leg which moves the athlete into the throwing position. This is often referred to as the crossover stride or crossover step. The weight of the thrower should now be positioned over the right leg, in the same position as for the standing throw. The left foot is then brought forward to achieve the basic throwing or delivery position. This is done on flat feet rather than on the toes. The thrower pushes from the back leg and at the same time drives the hips forward and up. As the athlete pulls through with the javelin, the left leg should straighten and remain in contact with the ground, acting as a pivot point for the thrower until the javelin is released. Once the three stride throw is established and refined, the athlete should then progress to the five stride approach. The five stride approach is just two extra running steps added to the three stride approach. The aim is to slightly increase the speed of the delivery phase, which will place extra demands on the athlete whilst they try to maintain good technique. The athlete starts with the javelin fully withdrawn, and the first step is taken by the left foot, the second by the right, and then it is into the three stride approach as previously described. The progression is left, right, left, right, left, or one, two, one, two, three. And the athlete would benefit from repeating the rhythmical progression to themselves prior to each throw. Extra distance can be gained from a longer run up, but running with a javelin can be difficult. So a comfortable carriage and withdrawal to the throwing position must be taught and practiced if it is going to increase throwing distance. Once the five stride throw has been mastered, the athlete should then progress to a longer run up.